This, confer this conference will now be recorded. Okay, it's being recorded now. Okay, we're all set. I guess it was before. I thought it was. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of approval. Oh, Bob, go ahead about the minutes. Bob, you got any comments? No, I move for accepting the minutes. And Helen seconded it. Any questions? All those in favor say aye. Oh, excuse me, put your hands up. Aye. Thumbs up, okay. Everybody's got a thumbs up. I, I will just quickly say Kathy approved, John approved, Helen approved, Bob approved, Jim approved, and Jack, and Paul approved, and Jackie. Your screen says Jackie, Paul, I'm sorry. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, moving yeah. next on the agenda, old business, uh, loom project update. We don't really have anything. Jan is not here, but she did give a presentation, a brief one to the Winters Warm Watershed Network. She's in contact with a couple of other groups and hopefully it will move forward with that. That's the monofilament line project of recycling. Uh, when it came up before the Woodis Warm Watershed Network, they also were looking for some other types of recycling, which might be able to go on simultaneously. One of the things of having a piece of PVC pipe is the kind of stuff that people put in that might not be monofilament line, and that can be an issue too. However, also the uh, periodic collection and maintenance of those uh, collectors. Under new business, Solar ordinance, John, go for it. Okay, so yeah, they went before the planning board, they had their hearing on it, and they're going to have, uh, I guess, another hearing coming up. Um, I think it's next week. I'd have to look on that. February any other... 26. Yes, February. Thank you. And um, yeah, there was. Um, it was, there were some questions that people asked, and that's about it. Kathy. Um, I, I liked all of your definitions. Um, a little concerned about the purpose being to respect aesthetics and preserve oral character. I'm not sure where we can, how, how that could be done. Because what you have is really very organized and logical and has all the information, basic information. <coughs> Whoops. Um, so I had a question ab about the solar easements. Because I've been reading about how, and I'm not sure about New Hampshire law, about how if my neighbor puts up a solar panel and a tree on my property interferes with his use of that panel that in some instances I could be required to take the tree down. So I'm just throwing that out. I know that's not part of your ordinance. That's part of the implementation. But Actually, it, it is. <laughs> well, you um, do have the sky space, yes. Yes, yeah. So um, as it is, that that cannot obstruct anybody. Uh, I mean, the, the tree, what you do on your property is acceptable, but um, if they want to try and stop you, they would have to go and set up an easement beforehand. And if I say no? Then you could grow trees as tall as you wish. There have been some cases, some lawsuits that have gone the other way, that the court said the person had the right to... I'm, this is not part yeah. of your ordinance, really. This is implementation later on. I'm just throwing mm. that out. And I can understand the law that said if you plant trees after the, the solar panel is put in, that's wrong. And that, that mm. makes sense. I guess that would be a civil thing. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm going to look into that. Thank you. Um, I want to just tell everyone that um, assuming that all these zoning amendments or whatever changes go are going to be moved forward as you probably know they will be put on the ballot 
that will come out for town elections and um, so that everyone here has some concept of where things are right now on town elections. I will uh, just tell you that if things go according to the past, the town elections would be held at the high school on Tuesday, March 9th, and the town meeting would be held at the high school in the gymnasium, not the cafetorium, in order to have a spread out seating on Saturday, March 13th. Um, I am in um, constant contact with uh, people at the high school, uh, with my two assistant moderators, as well as the select board. This Thursday, I don't know exactly the time yet, I will be on the agenda. Probably uh, also uh, Helen, who's an assistant moderator, and Catherine as health officer and assistant moderator will be there. And uh, there has been no decision whether to hold everything yet or not. If you are not aware of House Bill 1129, if the town were to adopt that or want to go in that direction, it would require a very strange series of uh, like Zoom type meetings. And then ultimately would end up with drive through voting. And that could be postponed to a time later. If we go through with the traditional ones, we could still theoretically have the town elections on Tuesday, March 9th, and we could, I could still then use COVID-19 to postpone the deliberative session to a later date. Um, we're not sure what the town would opt to do because of the financial issues and impacts related to uh, the borrowing of money. As you know, the town's budget runs out on December 31st, and so there is no Right now, there's a lot of things up in the air, but I'll just let you know that the whole voting on um, the town officers, the uh, zoning amendments and so forth will come up on that same ballot. And should they uh, opt for drive-in voting on later, there would be two separate ballots. One would have to deal with the warrants on the warrant articles. A separate ballot would have to be used for the town officers and the, war and the uh, zoning changes. And that's it in a nutshell. Excuse me. Somehow or other, Alexa was listening. <laughs> okay, next on the thing is annual town report. I think you all got a copy of it. If there aren't any changes or additions or deletions, I'll send that off to town tomorrow. Uh, Kathy, I was just thinking about the work. Um, I didn't know if balloon stuff came. This annual report that we'll publish later, or the work just so that we're, they, we can maybe we could put something in there about the uh, Jan's work around exploring opportunities with the loons. Just Good a point. long paragraph about that. It was nice, uh, nice to read. We did things <laughs> instead of just <laughs> hiding from COVID nineteen, <laughs> <laughs> but. It, it, it is a nice way to get the word out that it's another area that the conservation Perfect. committee. Is I'll take care on. of that. Thank you. Any anyone else? Okay, why don't we move on to the next item? Current use school school street properties. Uh, the town of Tilton. Uh, Kathy got an email recently from Tim, and. Um, in a nutshell, as of December 30th, there was roughly uh, almost $124,240.65. And there's an additional 12240 which will be deposited fairly soon. Uh, for a total of, we would be approximately $136,480. Um, apparently, what is it, Kathy? $5,300 or something like that? $1,530. Um, $1,530. Per, per lot. And there have been lot. 14 lots sold. So that money will be going into the fund. And let's see. Kathy, you also discovered... Is that the, the development cross from Ben's? 
Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. I was asking if that was the development across from Ben's. Yes. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Correspondence. Shoreland Protection Permit, Hill Road. We received uh, a note from them in no from DES in November saying they'd been someone had turned them in that they were working without a Sureland application permit. And then in December we got another note from DES saying cease and desist kind of thing. The end of December they sent in a permit application, but without the check and January 5th, they sent in the check and they have 30 days to respond. DES has 30 days to either ask for more information, approve or deny. Um, the people who own the property have been researching. The guy owns two or three lots in the general vicinity and his, I think it's his sister owns another one. So they're looking to do some big development. Does everyone know where this place is? If you go in that last right before you get to the Winnesquam General Store and it kind of loops around and comes back out by Jay's Marina, you get way in by that first corner if you go in the road by closer to the Winnesquam General Store. You look off to the left on the lake. They went in there and they tore down three places and they're building a huge thing. It's got to be at least three stories high. And this is where they went in and they, they, they started the building. And at this time, when they did this, I don't think they even had a building permit. Kathy had checked with the land use office and Albert was unaware that the that a shoreland protection permit was required. Did they even do a uh, demo permit? Yes, they did. I checked on that. Um, on the sec 2nd of November, they did. They gave them new construction and demolition. And on the 10th of December, they gave them an electrical approval. Okay. You can see it when you're coming back over the bridge headed from Laconia to Tilton. It's it's massive. On Fuchsius. Yeah. And it's it's right on the water. Yes. I'm certainly glad that I don't own property behind it. Well, for the betterment of this world, does anybody have anything else? John. It, so um, it came up again about Ice House Pond. <laughs> Um, the last week, um, I didn't realize a, uh, attorney from MB Tractor showed up at the meeting and, uh, asked for the town to just turn over Bittern Lane to them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so there was some discussion over it. Um, they, they said that they, they own the property there. And then, you know, I clarified that, that we do that they don't own the first uh, like 50, 75 feet. Um, Pat had brought up about, you know, that the Conservation Commission requested at one point that a guardrail be installed there. And they said, well, that would be a moot point because they would be owning that property now and managing it. Um, and uh, then they, you know, I mentioned that you know, people use that for fishing or picnicking or walking their dogs. Um, there's been people ice skating out there. Um, there's been um, some people with little inflatable boats. And uh, I was informed that uh, those people were trespassing and they um, were not allowed to do that because MB Tractor owns that. Um, and uh, yeah, so I urge everybody to um, watch the first part of the selectmen's meeting on it. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff on it and it's kind of, uh, yeah. So the, and you know, I was kind of disappointed because typically if we turn some property over to the town, we, I mean, from the town, 
at the taxpayer zone, we usually get some type of mitigation, um, whether we're monetarily, um, you know, given some money to purchase this piece of property or they buy other properties similar to give to us or donate. Um, but it seems like uh, a consensus of the Board of Selectmen, other than myself, that uh, we should just go ahead and put it on the warrant and have it at town meeting and uh, let everybody vet it out at the town meeting. Um, so that's where that's at. Um, there'll be another hearing on that, I guess, for the warrant articles. And uh, I would just ask that everybody listen to um, the first part of the selectmen's meeting when their attorney is um, making a lot of statements about who owns what and what they can do on it. So, so that's uh, waterfront, isn't it, John? Yes. So that has value because it's waterfront. It's the whole road, too, you know, right, right out to 3 and 11. And the roads improved. Yes, yeah, the town. Um, it, so uh, point is, I, I wonder what the town had uh, assessed that for prior to its ownership, and what's on the assessment card now. There's, there's, there's probably some value to it. Uh, John, if, uh, Jim, Jim, if I can. At this particular point, when you look at the inventory that's on that particular property, I'm not so sure uh, that the owner is at all concerned about paying a few more dollars in taxes for waterfront property. So I think the issue is we're going to have to get down to is whether or not there is any way the town might be able to maintain or be able to have some right of way to that pond. Right now, we know that the other side is pretty much all owned by Walmart, and right now they have not consented. It would appear that the only place we might be able to, anyone could get access to that pond might be right off of Route 3. I think one of the other issues, and Kathy and I have had a discussion on this, was even if some uh, access to the pond were allowed, the bigger bigger issue might be where would people park a car or a vehicle if they were going to leave one somewhere, and would they be going over? Would they be leaving trash? All that kind of stuff. And I I think you you know as well as I do what I mean what we do do want and don't want down at uh, Salmon Run. So I think if we're going to be doing anything in a formal way of trying to request some access to the pond, we need to get our horses in order and be able to speak intelligently at the town meeting because I don't believe it's going to be put on the uh, ballot. Well, that, that goes to my point is that the that there is value to that property. Uh, it's waterfront. Uh, there There's a, 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 an improvement from the road. Uh, it, it should be uh, it, there should be some compensation for the town to uh, to give that to a private property owner, uh, you know. Um, and at the same time, if, if the town does own it, and I, I think we've uh, sort of half-jokingly referred to this in the past, that the, the town could put a couple of Jersey barriers up uh, to prevent the uh, other people from using the town property uh, for parking their trucks and their cars and that sort of thing. Uh, and I think that the, the town also, uh, on many streets, uh, unless it's posted, the town allows parking on the side of the street as long as it's not part of the traveled way. So I think anyone can actually park there. It's just that uh, uh, MB Tractor, when they drive their, their 18-wheelers through, uh, doesn't want anybody to park there. And I, I, I know, Chuck, you're the chairman. I saw Kathy's hand, so I'll, 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 that's my piece. Okay. Well, I'm just going to say that I posted some stuff on Facebook, and the great minds at Tilton Northfield, the great legal minds at Tilton Northfield said, basically, MB Tractor owns that. And I'm not all that owns the Ice House Pond. And I'm, I'm not just sure where we are with that. Do we own that 50 foot sliver and they own half the pond and Walmart owns the other half? 
I think on that map that I told, I would said, John, um, I believe it shows a 50 foot right of way. At this particular point, however, that right of way would probably go away if that was no longer a town road, but a private road. And I think the biggest thing that the town is trying to do now is to have all responsibility of maintaining, plowing, and having anything to do with that road. They just want to take it off. They don't want to deal with it anymore. So I am not sure that that 50-foot right-of-way would even exist if the town decided to deed the road over to MB Tractor. And if once it's deeded over, if it is, then the idea of having parking along the side of that is something they could restrict on private property. John, I don't, I mean, Jim and John both, you know, I mean, it, this is something that I, you know, this afternoon I had the chance of talking to Bob Claridge. His family used to own the house that's in on that second lot. He was raised there. He was telling me how his dad was the one that officially changed the name of the road to Bittern Lane and explained it. Bob also told me how they took some of their animals from the property and where they're buried <laughs> and how it's a great pond for fishing for hornpout. And he went on and on and on. And we've gathered a lot of this information, including a steel pipe, which went from one side of the pond to the other and so forth. All this said and done, you know, I think having public access to that pond, I think, is important to the town of Tilton. And I, th and I think that has got to be a key. And I am willing to speak up at town meeting and have somebody else take over and say, and I'm willing to say the same thing. And if... One of the things I guess that's got to happen is that if once the deed goes through, if there's no clarification in there and it gets voted through, then getting public access won't happen. Now, the 50 foot right away, does that extend from the center line on both sides of the road or is it just 25 feet from the center line? on one side and 25 feet on the other side. You know what? I've got this map right here in front of me. I will try to take a more careful right look at it. On one side, the side closest to the pond. Okay, so would that extend, that 50 feet, would that extend to the edge of the pond to give us access or would it fall short? It know. would fall short. Um, I know you can't see this. <laughs> but it was designed originally so that if they wanted to widen the road. You sort the of see it, Chuck. Excuse me? You sort of see it. So what were you saying, to Kathy? It was designed so the town could widen the Bittern Lane if they needed a tur an access turn, is what I've been reading. Now, the other question I have is this dam that holds the water back at Ice House Pond, who owns the dam? It's on state property. The state. That's because the state dam bureau sends us letters about the damn dam. <laughs> Is that Dan at the dam bureau? Dan's the man that you talk to at the dam bureau. Yeah, right. I think we had Dan, that's, Dan that's at the dam bureau. Yeah, they access we... the town property to get to the dam. So he'd have to make a, he'd, <clears throat> M and B would have to let them access the dam from that property. I, I'm not inclined, I understand why the town wants to give up the road, but I'm not inclined to give up that property to this property owner. It's just year after year after year after year of it not happening the way it was presented at these discussions. And so, you know, he's constantly parking in the the 100 foot buffer, you know, every single year. And then he thought because he put a picnic table out, he was a good steward. Right. I think it's, I agree with you, Helen. We shouldn't give it up, but I I don't it's not as much of the town 
wanting to give it up. It was that he came and said, you should just give it to me. I'm going to, and he literally said, I'm going to relieve you of all of this burden and expense and the trouble of taking care of it. And it was, like I said, brought up about a guardrail or a fence. You could have relieved us all that. They said, the you don't even have to worry anything. about doing that anymore because we'll own it. <laughs> so, it, and the selectmen um, kind of, you know, it wasn't a, where the selectmen of the town approached them and they, they didn't. They uh, approached our land use coordinator and had uh, I've discussed this a few times with uh, land use and then with our uh, town administrator. With a statement like that, John, I could see why the town would take the bait. Well, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, after, uh, I had input from someone that said that when the presentation was made by the lawyer, it was made that the land use office uh, as well as the town administrator, and there was one other person, all supported this, by the way, none of whom were selectmen. So go no, figure. Sounds like people should function within their scope of authority. Now, I was going to say, no elected official uh, uh, mentioned it. This had been a discussion um, a couple years ago with a different town administrator and a different land use and it came before the board of selectmen and um, there was a lot of discussion it was turned down um, and just because of uh, no information and and uh, you have to be more specific and that's when we had given comments on you know um, the uh, guardrails and fences and snow plowing it was right after that um, but that person actually you know it was and it was mentioned on the thing was selectman dawson said that was fully in support of turning this piece of property over to them i did have a chance to talk to uh selectman former selectman dawson and who said oh no 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 that's not what i said <laughs> so and i said well you you've been misquoted as saying that you were fully for it and uh you know, and uh, you should listen to the uh, the video because that's um, yeah. You might want to mention that. So, just a little other piece of information. Is there anything else? Uh, what, what's going on on School Street uh, uh, with the excavator on the? Uh, Left-hand side, uh, going into town, uh, just around that brook. Are you talking about that former piece of property? Uh, well, it, it's, uh, I think it's around where that Assembly of God church is. It's across the street from that. Uh, it has a vi wetland violation on it. Oh, uh, John. John, I think you missed that. That land in there, which is where the guy from uh, Nashua or whatever had been and it had the wetlands violation, that was bought by um, Chambers. Chambers. Chambers Paving. Oh, Chambers Paving got it. Okay. He bought it. He plans ultimately to build his retirement home in there. And actually, he is cleaning it up. He's got silt fencing down. Okay. And he had been paying to haul off all that debris that was left. Yeah, it, it looked like it was being done properly. I just didn't know anything about it. Well, I mean, he told me that back properly. I would have said something earlier. I think we talked about that briefly in December, but I did talk to him in, in November at the, the election, and he told me what his plans were. And I know he's, he's paying so a lot of money to haul off all that stuff and he is going to clean it up cap yep cap anything else okay who's next you know what's next paul motion to adjourn i have a cheesecake i made <laughs> <laughs> it's got pecan topping on it <laughs> okay it's been a motion to uh, adjourn is there a second wave a hand
about uh, Hill Road. Oh, John. <laughs> Go ahead, Jim. Uh, Jim? The, uh, Hill Road was on the agenda. That was the one that, that we talked about, about um, that they had torn down the thing and by one of the Got it. Up by one of the bridge. Uh, yeah. Bridge. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to adjourn the meeting. Um, I I will do the roll call vote. I'll, this time I'll start with Paul. Hi. Jim. Hi. Bob. Hi. Helen. Hi. John. Hi. Yep. Kathy. Hi. Meeting is adjourned. Thank Good you night, very much. Everybody. Night. Bye. Cheesecake. That cheesecake sounds great, Helen. <laughs> I'd share it with you guys, but you're too far away. <laughs> yeah, virtual cheesecake eating. Thanks. <laughs> you can share a photo of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a, 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 a tour to France to drop it off. <laughs> Helen, I'm not going to be home till about till I'll be home by by 4:30 tomorrow. Okay, I could be anytime there probably around five. Anytime after that. Yep. Okay. Oh, sounds good. Bye. Uh, uh, what you free for a phone call? Am I waiting for a phone call? No, I asked Paul if he was free for a phone call. Absolutely. Okay, thanks, Paul. Talk to you then, Bob. Yep. See you. Bye-bye. End the meeting. Good night. Good night. <laughs>